This episode is sponsored by The Alcohol Experiment, a free 30-day challenge designed to interrupt your patterns, give you control, restore your health, and put you back in touch with the version of you who doesn't need alcohol to cope, relax, or enjoy life. More than 220,000 people have already tried The Alcohol Experiment for themselves and have seen improved sleep, increased happiness, reduced anxiety, and so much more. Join thousands in this inspiring, hopeful, and exciting program where you examine your beliefs and reconnect with the best version of you. Without ever feeling like you're missing out. Start today for free at alcoholexperiment.com. Hi, this is Annie Grace, and welcome to this Naked Mind podcast. Uh, this podcast is one that, oh man, I, there are some people who have touched and transformed my life um, and given me insight and wisdom from a distance in ways that I, I can't even begin to explain. The level of gratitude is insurmountable. And uh, Byron Katie is one of those people. I first started with her book, Loving What Is. She has a process called The Work, which we will um, make sure to link below. And she has things like judge your neighbor worksheets and uh, how to do this process. But it is such a freeing process to just find your own your own peace and wonder in the world. And after I stopped drinking, this process at its core was what helped me to unwind so many of the things that I was thinking and still helps me to this day. And I'm actually radically inspired after recording this podcast to dive back into it wholeheartedly because of how profound it is and the new uh, lease on it she's given me that it is forever work. And um, so anyway, we'll, we'll link all of the, the show notes below and the resources, but I hope you enjoy this conversation as much as I did. And just to tell you before, before we start, um, you know, she uses terms like alcoholic or alcoholism, terms that we don't really use around here, but they're the terms that people use and they're just words. And of course, I just wanted to experience the conversation rather than educating her on <laughs> the naked mind way of doing things. So you'll hear some of that. And, um, and some of it might, you know, you might not follow and that's okay too. I, I remember vividly early days, I've read her stuff multiple times and I understand she speaks in layers of truth and there's so many layers in it. And I understand so much more now than I did, but I believe even if you just open your heart to listen, there's, there's always something there for everyone. So I hope you enjoy. I almost forgot to record. I was stunned <laughs> into, hi. Hi, good to see you. Ah, oh, so good to see you. Wow. Thank you for your good work. Oh my gosh. Thank you for being here. Thank you for coming on. I'm just like, it's really special. Your work has been so transformational for me in my life. And I have, I've written a book to help people, you know, make peace with their relationship with alcohol, kind of no matter what that means to them without sort of any rules, but really with the idea that, uh, when we have beliefs that something is good for us and useful to us, and we force ourselves to stop doing it, we create a lot of internal pain. And if we can unwind those beliefs, if we can find the truth of, of what that substance is in our life, the reality of it, they very naturally can let go of us and we can move into a place of emotional freedom where we just don't want it as if we don't want to drink a glass of motor oil and, um, and, <laughs> I was turned on to uh, your first book that I, I read was Loving What Is. And it was just so special because I was in a point where I think we all find ourselves of just looking, looking everywhere else, but internally for peace and trying to change all the circumstances around us. And I, I guess I wonder like, what is your thoughts on why are we, um, why is it our default mode to, to try to change other people, circumstances, reality first? Yeah, it doesn't make sense, but the ego, you know, the all powerful ego, you know, that's what it wants to be, the all powerful. It, um, it, um, it wants to change the world rather than look to itself, because if it looked to itself, it would find no self there. As ego is a state of mind, it's not a thing. 
and you would think nothing wouldn't be so powerful, but it is, um, it's, it's, um, you know, I refer to this as earth school, and we're here to wake up to our true nature, to the answer to everything that, that you just spoke to, and, and, uh, you know, why, the, the why, and I have, um, you know, I just by some grace saw how all how my life and addictions and self was created. And it was just a, a moment of grace. I saw it. I got it. Like I got some kind of joke that was going on and I was the last to know. And but a lot of clarity came out of it. You know, let's call it a moment of clarity, but seeing how my world, how my world began. And, and when we look at something like alcoholism, that's a state of mind. Mm -hmm. But what I have found, and I'll just kind of jump into it with no plan. Perfect. But you know, I, I use the term our true nature, our goodness, that part of us that can see so clearly and is kind and um, and where we're at our best. Mm -hmm. But let's say I say something, and this is just some kind of law because it goes against the self, that beautiful self, you know, our true nature. But let's say I say something to you that's hurtful or um and i know it and or some um something that's hurtful um, um unkind and i can say it think it or do it and when you do it it's all three of those going on but but we carry that with us what I said to her, I did to her, I said to her, or I give her the look, it doesn't matter. The point I'm trying to make is, I'm going to feel guilt. There's no way I can. Mm -hmm. There's no way I can't. Guilt, maybe some shame, but guilt for sure. So when I feel guilt, the ego immediately offers a way, it offers a way to shift that emotion. Guilt is hard because it reflects back what is not I by nature. Mm -hmm. So as that reflects back, I see, experience again in my mind's eye and emotions what I what I did and what I said. And as I experience the guilt, this magical thing the ego offers up is, I'll say it this way, like if you bite into a big, imagine yourself biting into a big, ripe, juicy lemon right now. You felt the physical effects. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I experienced guilt. The ego offers up a way out of guilt, which is like pleasure, a way out. And, and if I'm alcoholic, for example, or a dope fiend or whatever my drug of choice is, I'm, I'm a chocolate, die for chocolate fan. <laughs> Whatever it is, let's say alcohol, it shows an image of not only alcohol, but where to get it. Maybe it's in a glass with ice, whatever the ego take to, it shows me where it is, what it is, and like the lemon. If I'm alcoholic, I just had the first drink and I didn't even get to drink it. It is pure ego in action. So how do you fight? They say the alcoholic, you know, don't take that first drink or you're gone. So I just had the first drink and I didn't get to drink it. All the effects, 
So then I see images that match images in my mind's eye. Our ego offers them up. I'm experiencing the drink. Well, when I'm doing that, I see where it is in the future, me drinking it. And I see in the past when I have done it. And so that is my state of mind. Now, how can you fight that? You've already had the first drink. In other words, the emotional. So what feeds all of this? What feeds all of this? Guilt. So if we take care of, if, you know, I have a, a thing of, you know, I, I call the work the, and, and it is a way to put that, that mind on paper. There are six questions on that worksheet and we just answer those six questions and then we question what we have filled in on that worksheet one through six. And, and then we, we do what 12 step programs do. It's so brilliant. It's, it's like if I wrote on, um, I want them to, um, I want them, I want that person. I can't think of a want right now, but let's, let's say on number two, I wrote, I want them to admit they were wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, and they don't do it. In fact, they're doubling down. Right. Okay. And I say they double down, double down. They've ruined my reputation. They have told my that now my best friends aren't speaking to me. And now I'm on social media and it's just done. Dun, dun, and I'm just, and it's their fault. And, um, and I do this one little thing. I do this one little, this one little thing. I, I say, there's something wrong with you. And, and, or maybe I send something out on social media that's hurtful, that, that judges them in a terrible way. Okay, now I can justify it. Everyone in the world could justify. I did it once. They're doing it a thousand times and it's spreading. Okay. So I did it once. Okay. So what hurts me? It's not anything they're doing. And that sounds crazy to people. It's not anything they're doing. Why do I want that drink or that chocolate or whatever it is? I've just described it. But I'm feeling guilt. What is the way out of that? Oh, honey, I don't know how my words sound here. It's it's um so difficult. Um, no, I think it's I think it's exactly right. Like where so you're able to follow it. Yes, and I think so many people feel both things. You're talking about regret of what I did in the past and how that regret actually spirals into drinking more. And yeah. so we think regret is like. Well, if I just beat myself up for it, like you don't know, and you don't know what I've done. I've done these horrible things. And I'm like, well, if you stay in that place of guilt and regret, you will drink more. It is only through forgiving yourself that you will drink less. And also you're talking about someone else coming up to you and you needing them to change in order for you to be okay with your not drinking. Like I get this all the time. My partner is pressuring me like they really want me to start drinking again. They miss who I was when I was having wine. They miss who I was. And if they would just change, then I would be able to change. And so I think you're talking very nicely about both of those things. Yeah. And, and if I say or do anything to hurt that person, like you want me to drink, you just don't get it. It'll get it, 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 and you this and you that, and I da, 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 and and you know, I'm I'm going to experience guilt no matter how I try to justify it. That's just how it is. So um, it's like the princess and the pea, you know, they can, they can just say and do anything they want that's hurtful, but it's that one little thing I say or do that I've got to identify and take care of, or I'm going to drink over it, chances are, or not drink over it and collect something else as a substitute. And we can actually, um, we can actually even use anger as um, 
as an, as an addiction and, and just be so lost in it. But bottom line, I have to take care of, of what I've done because until I do, guilt is just going to run my life and it can be so underground, I don't even know it. I'm so busy justifying why I said and did what I said and did. And that's not ever going to fly. It's not going to match our nature, which is um, kindness, gratitude, and a life of how can I help? It's oh the opposite gosh. of attack. It's just the opposite of attack. I can't afford it. And um, so I, you know, and I've got to afford it if I don't know a way out. So I write down my state of mind on that judge and neighbor worksheet. My state of mind. And I judge that person. Yeah, that's it. And I judge that person on paper. And that's where, you know, I say all war belongs on paper. And um, so my thoughts about that person. And I'm thorough when I fill that in. Six questions cover it all. I want, I need, they should, they shouldn't. You know, it's just true alcoholic addictive thinking. And, you know, how do I, how am I going to change the world? You know, spoken like a true ego. So I do that. And then I question, I question everything on that worksheet with those four questions and turnarounds that I invite people to um, to experience and drop into what really is a meditative state. It's a med it's, it takes stillness to fill in the worksheet and it takes stillness and a lot of courage to question it because it's, it, it costs us identity. And, you know, each time it's, um, mm, yeah, identity. You know, it, the ego would say, I'm just going to be a victim now. Anyone can take advantage of me. That belongs on paper to question that one. But, um, mm, you know, I, I do the work with people and it starts to make sense. But when I verbalize it, like this and, and like your your you your experienced in in this and can track it but I hope that that your um the people listening to your program today can follow a little <laughs> a little more closely than I, I I think so because um I mean you just revealed something that is so profound and so true. And in all my, it's been six years now that I've been doing the work and coming to your virtual events and, and doing things on myself. And I do have a follow-up question about my own work. Uh, but one of the things that I think you just so well articulated is this idea that it is not, so my question was, why do we point everywhere besides ourselves first? And you said, the only reason we do that is because we respond, we do act or say something that is outside of our nature, who we are meant to be, our truest, kindest yeah. self, the self that's connected with all things, the self that is who we know we're supposed to be. We react to the world in one way or another because of ego. And then it's in that guilt that all the pain is. It's in that guilt that we, that we double down on, um, it's reminding me of like, turn the other cheek, right? Because it's in that ability to say like, actually, I want to acknowledge that I, I hurt you and I'm sorry. It's in that, that there's so much freedom, whereas it's in the guilt of, but, but I'm right. And, and I've gotten so trapped in that story so many times, especially with quotes. Now, quote, now we're talking addiction. Yeah. <laughs> Right. That's this that's, is addiction. The you know the 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 alcohol, et cetera, they're just side effects. And I I just I remember being so asleep. And I'm sure there's places I'm still very asleep in it that I just can't even see yet because it isn't that's part of my journey. But I remember being so asleep and but 
but I, I have this list. They, they are toxic. They are wrong. You don't understand. I have this list. Look at all this evidence that I have for how they have treated me, how they have done this, how they have done this to my kids, how they've done this to my, you know, and, and it's, it's we, war. It's war. And it's the more we go there. And so, yeah. and it's not war until I am involved. I'm the one that starts the war and there's no way, you know, yes, they said what they said. Yes, they did what they did to my kids. Yes, they did. Yeah. And everyone agrees they're wrong. They did it. And, um, the moment I start defending my position, you know, they're wrong, I'm right position, then, I, you know, who started the war? I did. I did. And it doesn't seem fair, the ego would say, but um, I started the war. Now, if I judge them on paper and, and wake up, you know, I am, um, I I meet an understanding within myself that sets them free when I'm free. But as long as I'm at war, I am, I am feeding the war. Even when they stop fighting, let's say they stop fighting me, I'm still at war in my head and it doesn't stop me from, from um, defending my position to my deathbed you know i was right <laughs> right and 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 there's no peace in that doesn't no. matter how long you take it or how right you are or how much you can prove it or if the whole entire world agrees with you yeah. there's yeah. just no peace i am um, to give a really tangible example i ha i did the the judge your neighbor worksheet when a friendship of mine was dissolving because in my words she couldn't be happy for me and and she said you know, you're having success and I just look at you and I, I feel, um, I, I compare myself and so it's hard for me to be around you. And that was her truth, but I didn't take that as her truth. I, I took that as highly offensive and <laughs> all of a sudden now like, gosh, a friend should be able to celebrate my success and, uh, you know, went down the whole thing. So many thoughts, so many beliefs, but one of the turnarounds that was so powerful for me was she should be able to celebrate my success. And then I turned it around to, I should be able to celebrate my success because I wasn't, I wasn't able to allow that whatever was happening to me had that reaction in her. And I was mourning that. And so I lashed out because I took it as a judgment of who I was instead of, okay, that's, that's her, that's her business. That's how she's reacting to this life circumstance. And and then I couldn't celebrate and, yeah. and I should be able to celebrate her success in telling her truth, right? Because yeah. she yeah. was able to tell me what she needed, which was a break. And, yeah. and that's actually really beautiful, but it took me a long time to see that. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, yeah, that's a beautiful thing to see. It's, it really is the ultimate uh, taking responsibility for one's own self is to take responsibility for our thinking our thoughts about the way we see the world. Oh my, I guess I could just go on and on, but we're just not gonna, if we feel experience guilt or shame, we need to look to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Just expect the ego to, to just be positive that the other, it's the other person's fault. And, um, And almost so positive and so protective of that belief that it's the other person or the circumstances. It just is society that makes me drink. It's just, you know, it's a, it's as if it's a fortress that the work helps you break through in order to be able to see that actually underneath all that, I have responsibility for how I'm living my own life. Yeah, to take responsibility, you know, these these the four questions. It is all about that. It is all about that. It really, we're in a kind of hypnotic trance and it wakes us up from the trance. And we can't even guess at the freedoms. They're, they're, they just unfold and unfold and unfold just like the ego used to. And it's just, just this beautiful world. It's like graduating from some horrible nightmare you find yourself in a um, in a 
whole other reality, a whole other world. And the reason I call it the work is it's it's uh, it's work. It requires the ego to spill itself onto paper and to be upfront with itself. And it loves doing that. It loves to be heard and written about. So filling it in is the ego's cup of tea as well. But um, it's a mixed bag at first. You know, do I really want to write that? Who, me? Do I really? Yeah, but... Yeah, but it's a very personal, private thing. It's just you with yourself, just one on one. And yet it still takes courage. The questions are, um, is it true? Can you absolutely know that it's true? How do you react and what happens when you believe that thought? And who or what would you be without that thought? And applying those four questions to everything you write in the Judge Your Neighbor worksheet. And in that example that I just gave, if I can let go of the thought that she should be happy for me, I get to be happy for me. Yeah. I also get to be happy for her. Mm -hmm. And so in, in seeing the cost of the thought, we can really wake up to that there's, it's just a thought that's keeping us in so much pain. What we're thinking and believing that keep us in the trance. Yeah. So for me in my journey, um, I find myself very easily now to be able to put someone else on paper. I don't even have to put them on paper anymore. Immediately, I'm just, mm -hmm. oh, turn around. That was me. Oh, it's still me. Oh, it's still me. Uh, but internally, I still, I have, like, the only worksheets I can do these days are I am frustrated with myself because I've let, you know, fear get in the way of doing what I think I'm supposed to do in the world or because I've not been present with my children. And, um, and I'm curious, I've heard you say like, don't do it on yourself, but I am curious, like, how can I do it on myself in order to reach that next level of freedom? If I am filling in, let's say um, this person I'm so angry at or, or disappointed in whatever it is. If I am, identifying the thoughts I'm thinking about her as I fill in that worksheet, that's the guide. <coughs> then it's all about me. Those are my thoughts. Those are the thoughts that are causing all of my irritation, my resentments, those are the thoughts that literally keep me in a kind of hell. So when I question my thoughts, I set me free from the, the life that believing that way gives me. It's a life that's small, an enlightenment, full of resentments and... Um, and addiction. And, and so, so if I judge myself, my ego has control of what I, I write down. Right. So even in the little things where I'll have a, because obviously I still have very judgmental thoughts about other people, but like, so I have a thought and I'm like, oh, well, they should have told me that sooner. And then I'm quickly like, well, kind of turn it around and Maybe I should have, you know, whatever. But even in those little things, just taking it to the pettiness and taking it to the page, even if I feel like I can unwind the immediate pain, mm -hmm. is still useful because that's still reflecting. Me. Yeah, anything, anything that's helpful, I'm for. <laughs> yeah, but but there's more to it. Um, there's more to it. There could be more to it that the ego doesn't allow us to be aware of. And that is its job is to keep us asleep. So I just, um, I just, you know, really support filling in the judge and neighbor worksheet. But if I do have just one thing to work that comes to mind, um, I use the, um, the one belief at a time worksheet and we can just take but you know, it's okay to judge oneself. It's just know that the ego, it's the ego's way of, of not giving you the full picture. That it's got ammo behind it, that, 
that keeps we, you know, just doing a quick self judgment is, um, yeah, it's like a band aid and it's really helpful. But oh, what is under that? A judge and neighbor worksheet. It's like going into the going into the darkness and and seeing what's there and just collecting it all. Like like it's you know, just golden, just like a diamond mind. What you bring up there, because like if I think uh, he lied to me, then and I and I do a full worksheet on that then I understand that there is so much in me, I had no idea what goes with. He lied to me, just that one thing. And, um, and it's, um, it, it's so valuable because the next time I, I'm thinking, oh, she lied to me or my children lied, it doesn't matter. I am so awake because I did that whole worksheet. And, and when I look back at the past, it affects, it, it affects the past. When it comes up, someone else that lied to me in the past. But it's, um, it's, it's, there are, you know, I haven't found any new stressful thoughts. You know, they're just, as I talk about in my books, they're all recycled. He lied to me. If I really work that, then it affects every time I think someone lied to me. And it's the opposite of denial. Wisdom meets the mind. And it's, it is, uh, you know, the uh, awakened mind. And it doesn't mean the person didn't not, did not lie. That's not what it's about. It's how I react when I believe the thought. He lied to me. That's what hurts me what I think, say, feel, and do toward that person, like in silence or out loud, that is, that is me just digging into my own unenlightened grave. <laughs> you know, the, the um, addiction, you know, where the ego, we're just so addicted to believing what it offers up and how it affects us like that lemon. Wow. I'm really motivated because I've been feeling like stuck in the work myself. It's like, I, I don't, I don't know. I'm not really. Yeah. Honey, I feel it'll, really motivated. it'll blow your mind. Here I am more than 30 years in and, and I can do a worksheet to this day. It blows my mind. You know, that, I know mine that would keep us from filling one in and sitting in it. It is, um, it, it just, you know, this is a practice and that supports us to stay in the practice if we just fill it in, if we don't even work it. I mean, we get to see, let's say if we do a worksheet every morning, we get to see what the ego is up to that day. <laughs> just, oh. That ego, it's up to no good, but it would lead us to believe that's where the good is. Wow. And so it really is the ego that is at the core of, I mean, we're so like, one of my questions for you, I think you've already probably answered it, but um, we're so resistant to what is, like in your book, Loving What Is, and people will be like, I can't love what is, it's a pandemic and it's a this and it's a that. And it's like, we just have so much resistance to like what is actually happening. Yeah, and it's, and it's like, we're not supposed to love everything that is. How can we love, you know, this horror and that horror and everything? It's, it's um, um, well, one way I'm a victim, I can do the work and it shows me, it, it gives me direction, it gives me clear direction on how to live with those living turnarounds. And there's, there's, um, the world is, um, there are two worlds, there's the world and there's the world as I believe it to be. So I just see this world as like, like, like this, this precious, flawless gift 
no downside, this beautiful gift of life, but what I'm thinking and believing about life, that's what needs the work. Until I'm at home in the world, I'm not at home in myself. And until I'm at home in myself, I'm not at home with the world. You know, the there's not a thought that isn't about us. And that, you know, the ego is is it's it's fighting for its life. And it's, you know, when we wake up to it, it's 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 there's life as opposed to what we imagine life to be. Oh, I had to write that down that there's not a thought that isn't about us. And even if you are one of the things that I've I've heard you say before that I think is so profound way of thinking of things is that if you're if you're internally, so right now here we are, we're just sitting here, nothing is is happening. <laughs> this is our experience. Uh-huh. Talking to each other, it's a little sunshine coming in. We're mm-hmm. we're comfortable. Um, but if I internally start to think about a tragedy, I have just only created tragedy in my experience right now. I haven't actually, even if I'm trying to think about how I'm going to solve that tragedy, I haven't, I've, I've just added suffering. But are you thinking it or did the ego offer it up? You didn't you think, I think I'll think about that now. It just came to you. Yeah. That's what the ego does. It's it's always uh, attempting to identify as object, you know, the physical body and I. But no, no thought about me. We we wake up in the morning, it's first thing is I, I am, and and it starts building. I am awake. I am late for work. I am, I need to, I want to, I should, I shouldn't, I, 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 all day long. And it's, it's exhausting. Suffering is, is, um, it can get so heavy. It can get so heavy. And, and, you know, that's where we, we, start turning to substances and relationships and, 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 you know, just seeking as opposed to looking inside, we, we're we looking out. And even if it's things like, well, I am going to solve this or I am going to help, they're, they're still so centered in I. Yeah, I, I am, I am going to help. And just to be aware, no right or wrong there, just go help and just notice they may not need your help or want your help. And, <laughs> and, and it's a trick to notice that, to see, you know, sometimes help is just seeing that we're not needed. But ego doesn't see it that way. It just, you know, it's, 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 it's to be so free. You know, I can... Um, I could be walking and look at a tree and, and just think tree. And it's like, I know it's a tree and the whole world says it's a tree in every language and, and, and we believe it, but who would I be? You know, what is it without my eye in it? My eye, I know mind, my I know it's a tree mind. And that's where the miracle happens. It gets to tell me what it is. And that takes listening and quiet. And it can blow blow your experience to smithereens, just to see the world that way as a gift. You know, just living out of that don't know mind as opposed to I know, I know. It's a tree, I know. Well, of course. And then we... Um, with children, we teach them, you know, that's a tree and and that's a flower and that's a that's a this and that's a that. And and so I got that indoctrination as a child. We all do in whatever language. And my mother said it's a tree, my father said it's a tree, my siblings said it was a tree, my friends said it's it's a tree. But not to me, it's not until the moment I believe. And then that's my first tree. And I may be three years old, four years old, who knows? 
But that is where, that's where I see my experience, my first tree. Well, what happened? I believed. And did I believe on purpose? No. I'm in, I'm in trance. I'm in trance. I see it. And then I'm walking in the world and I, or the next morning, I, I see that tree. Now, I would not know it's a tree if I had not believed it yesterday. So am I seeing the tree that, that I'm looking at this morning or yesterday's tree? No, it looks like I'm just looking at this one and it's the same because now the ego is comparing, comparison. So I'm caught up in this, in this waking, this waking dream of, of duality. There's my my friend just had a baby and, and you just, her name is Eleanor and you just look at her eyes and she's just pure consciousness. She's so aware but she has no language for tree. Yeah. So she's just experiencing. Yeah. Amazing to consider our experience without language. Yeah. I wonder if the ego could even exist without language. How could it? Right. And language creates all the barriers. Like if we could just communicate with each other without it, we would have no barriers. We wouldn't, we wouldn't have to explain ourselves or well try to put things into words yeah it's um and and we can have it all we can we can be clear of mind in other words awake to ourselves and um and do um do a better job of what we're doing with our planet with each other and um our contributions. Mm, I love that. And it always just really starts inside. And yeah, this is amazing for me because I've just been in this. Um, and I, I guess it probably goes that way, right? Where you have these moments of less ego as much as we can have it. And then you get caught up, caught up, <laughs> but it's a different flavor. Mm -hmm. so, so it doesn't feel like that because that I, I I recognize that one this is a new flavor this is a flavor of a more evolved ego or a you know uh -huh. <laughs> well, it's like I was right and wrong um, in the old days and I can see now that was wrong but I'm right now <laughs> right, right. <laughs> those things really it's it's wonderful to um, allow every sentence that runs through our head or our voice um, um, when people take the work on as a as a, a practice in stillness it's um it's um everything we think begins to end in a question mark mm. it's like oh my gosh it's such a beautiful day inside can be experienced like Oh my gosh, it's a beautiful day. You hear it, it's like comes out like a question mark. So even the most beautiful thing can 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 be um even more. Mm. Beauty beyond words. Yes. Wow. Just a, a beautiful world. There's the world that let's just say there's 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 a beautiful world, flawless flawless a beautiful world giving world but what we're thinking and believing about the world those are two different worlds there's the world and then the world of our imagination so inquiry is about waking up to the world ourselves and the gift we've been given the gift of life that's so beautiful um one more question for you which is well two more questions one is practicing the work are there any and we'll, we'll link it all in the podcast but are there any um habits or practices you know you said in the morning daily and then you get to know what your your ego is thinking what the flavor of the day is or is there do you have any um practical mm -hmm. guidelines around that well just um just to fill in a 
a judge your neighbor worksheet every day and have a have an amazing day. And then um, if it's not an amazing day, it'll give you tomorrow's worksheet. <laughs> Perfect. That's amazing. <laughs> so good. Um, and then I, I always end this podcast with a question and usually it's, it's usually people's stories through, um, through overcoming, you know, alcohol. And the question is, I'm going to phrase it in a different way, but the question is, if you were going to go back in time and tell yourself what life is like now, um, what would you say? And, and I usually say when you were still really caught in drinking, but I guess I would love to ask you if you were going to go back in time to, uh, you know, the buyer and Katie who is just caught in the mind and tell her about life now, what would you say? I would say that life is a dream. And then my, my younger self would say, you're crazy. <laughs> Or I might say, it's a beautiful world. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. And if they do, don't believe it. Then I would, how would I believe that? And, and I mean, how would I believe the first part? And how could I not, you know, adjust that second part for, for yourself? But I, I can't think of any advice. You know, I would say, you're lovable. Mm. And, and I wouldn't believe that for 43 years. And it's so hard to think of giving words of wisdom to the self that you know wasn't ready to hear them, I suppose. Yeah, I think I, um, the answer might now be after consideration is um, just to look at my younger self and, and say, I love you. And that might connect the um the old wisdom with what is already there that we're born we're born with yeah that that might just ring a little bell that's perfect and maybe we all have that when we're born and and uh wake up to it something that's what my earth is about, waking up to the beauty of the world. And yeah. The people in it. And our true nature and, and basically gratitude and how can I help? Which is where we kind of started with. Yes. I, uh, this has just been such a gift. Thank you so much for, for coming on and spending the time. I just so appreciate it. And it's just been such a... Oh a dream and an honor to share some space with you. Oh, so thank you. Love, love, love you in the world and your heart. And, and I mean, thank you for your, for your good works. All right. Thank you. Have you tried the alcohol experiment? Okay, if not, drop everything and go to thisnakedmind.com forward slash experiment. This free 30-day challenge is designed to interrupt your patterns and put you back in touch with the best version of you. You remember it was that version of you that's living your most joyful life, the version that doesn't need alcohol to relax or to have a good time and is having more fun than ever. And again, this is a totally free challenge that will change everything for you. So learn more and join me 100% free at thisnakedmind.com forward slash experiment. And as always, rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast as it truly helps the message reach somebody who might need to hear it today.